talked about but testing. Isn't that free? Yeah. Hello? Huh? Hi. Hi, can you try again? We couldn't quite hear. You may want to try typing your question. I do see that a lot. The, which, um, oh. What kind of maths are we talking about when you talk for... Oh, so, so what's, what are the actual um, what kind of math, math background are expected for the cryptography Or also, what um, kind of math is related to computer science? Oh, okay. So, so two different questions. So, so for, um, in general, for computer science, the, the, most of the math that we use is discrete math. And what discrete means is values that are in a, a well-defined set. So the integers are discrete. There's a finite number of them. Uh, there, actually, countable. there's an infinite number. There's a countable number, um, as opposed to the real numbers, where there's uh, an uncountable number of real numbers. Um, and so discrete things are things that are countable. You can count how many there are. Um, the continuous math, like calculus, comes up in some areas of computer science, but not nearly as often to dis discrete math. And the reason discrete math comes up is because in computers, we're representing things using the digital abstraction. So we're representing things at the level in the computer as zeros or ones, where although there's physical things that are analog that are storing the values, we're doing all the processing on, on them as discrete values. Um, so most of the math that is most fundamental to computer science is discrete math. So logic is a big part of that. Um, and you've been doing logic. You've been using if and predicate tests. You've really been doing logic. Um, there's a lot of formalism behind the logic that we haven't covered in CS101, and we will have a discrete math course that will be one of the courses that's, that start in June. Um, the other kinds of math that are um, important, so for cryptography, um, we use probability a lot, so that's um, probably the, the most important background to have for the cryptography course I'll teach. Um, number theory is used a lot in cryptography, so um, things like modular arithmetic is used a lot, and, and that's used in all of computing. Um, but becomes especially important in cryptography. Um, and what else? Well, and Sebastian's class sees a lot of linear algebra. Yes, yeah, linear algebra. Um, definitely the, the yes. Sebastian's class, robotics, AI, graphics, yeah. all use linear algebra a lot. Um, cryptography uh, does use linear algebra, not the cryptography that I'm going to focus on in, yeah. in the course that I'm going to teach. But there are parts of cryptography that, that are based heavily on, on using lattices, and that's, that's all building on linear algebra. We did talk about homework 2.5 earlier. Uh, uh, the co-ops conjecture yeah, questions, we had a, I think. When we post these, uh, this I'm video on the I'm surprised we haven't had more questions about that yet, but, but I think <laughs> uh, hopefully people saw the discussion earlier. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll post it on the website. Yes. Uh, why numbers are immutable? Uh, what was that? Oh, so the, the question um, where you assign x plus 1 to x, why does that create um, a new number? What, does that create a new number? And um, it, it's, a, it's a good question to, to think about. So when we think about what programs mean, we have a, a model. And that's an abstract model of saying, well, we're not modifying a number. We're creating a new number. Um, we're not actually creating something new to build that number. We just need to store that number. Um, so often the way we, we think about programs executing as a model doesn't correspond very closely to the actual resources that are used to execute the program. Um, another example, and, and this, uh, depending on how far you've seen in lectures, that the range that takes in two numbers, um, we think of that as producing a list between the two numbers, and that's what it does. But when it's used in a for loop, the Python interpreter is much smarter and doesn't actually have to build that list. That's why it's faster to use the for with the range than to use the while loop with the, the adding, um, adding one. So these are things where it's helpful to have a simple model that shows how the program executes and is correct in terms of the semantics and the meaning of the program. In terms of what's actually implemented, 
there are lots of ways that things might be implemented that don't actually involve doing everything that our model says. Accessing the Python interpreter. Um, okay, so the question is being able to access the, the interpreter and lecture at any and time. And people to experiment uh, with yeah, so, so we hope the site will soon have a, a button that makes it easy to pop up the interpreter and try things on your own. Um, if uh, there are other ways to run Python, and um, depending on what kind of machine you have, that, that could be quite easy. If you have um, a Mac, if you open a Mac shell and type Python, you get a Python interpreter. So you can try things yourself that way. Um, if you don't have a Mac, you can go to python.org and download uh, the Python distribution, and that includes a way to run Python that works on almost all platforms. Um, so there are lots of ways to, to run Python separately from the way we run in the class. Um, we think having the embedded interpreter that you can run right in the browser is helpful, and, and you don't need to install any software to the class. Um, and we hope to make it easier to access that, but for now it's only when you have a, a quiz or homework problem that uses it. The next question is, am I your student? I, I, uh, is it, do I answer that or do you answer that? I don't that? know. Well, I'm, uh, not, I'm, not your, I'm not taking the Udacity course right now. That's, that's true. Um, I am a student in uh, Dave's uh, security research group back at the University of Virginia. Uh, so Peter was, was a TA for me back at uh, the University of Virginia and um, a student in my research group has done a, a lot of uh, very exciting research on security, which is what my, my group does work on. Um, and since he managed to finish all his course requirements a semester early, uh, is able to come out here to be a TA for this class, which is uh, much more than a full-time job. Yes, this um, is true. Uh, it, well, I guess he's still sort of a well, student. Well, it's, it's 9 o'clock uh, and we're still here. Yes. So uh, it, it's kind of a 9 to 5? And, it's and a 5 to they, 9 They do job. say, like, you know, once a student, always a student. So okay. um, It's all about the mindset. Yes. Um, we talked about the Udacity name earlier. So um, I think we should take one last question from yeah, a so live person. Yeah, so does anyone person. have so, a last question? So who has the last question that... Because my battery is uh, about to die anyway. Yeah. Oh, I've got one okay. question. Great. Sure, go for it. Do you, do you plan on offering um, like graduate level classes or, or classes that would involve more research and, and more interaction with the students? Um, so we definitely plan to offer more advanced courses. And the, the course Sebastian is teaching now is... Uh, Fairly graduate level, I think. Yeah, uh, it's, it, it's, it's definitely um, uh, much beyond what, what most undergraduate courses yeah, this is would very be. True. Um, the planned courses that, that we'll have in June um, are probably so the 200 level courses and, and then so, some more advanced undergraduate level courses. Um, we'll definitely have a mix of uh, more introductory and more advanced courses as, as we go forward. Um, a, a lot of you know the, the experience of doing a PhD is really individual focused on a research problem working very closely with a professor for um, years and that's something that sort of involves a, a lot of you know one-on-one -on -one interaction and, and working sort of to define a problem to work on is very unique experience so it's not something that you can scale or offer without having um, many in-person meetings and that, that's really to do a phd um, is a very different kind of teaching than, than classes would be um, but we think we can definitely offer and do plan to offer you know, high-level graduate courses. Um, that will probably be a, a little bit later before we have, have many graduate yeah. courses, but, but we, we will have that. Okay. Well, Well, thanks, late. everyone, for, for joining the Hangout. Um, this was an experiment. I think it uh, more or less where we had some glitches getting yeah. started. Um, and and you know, we realize people are in different time zones, so if we uh, do this again, we'll, we'll schedule at a time that's more convenient for uh, Africa and Europe, yeah. and we'll move the time around that to, to work well for different students. Uh, but thanks everyone who, who joined us, and uh, thanks for the questions. And we'll post them on the website. Yes. So uh, if you came in late, you'll okay. be able to see them. Okay. Okay. Good night. Good Thank night. you.